Hello and welcome to IPO Review. Today we are going to talk about initial public offering from Rainbow Children's Medicare, a multi-specialty pediatric and gynecology hospital chain. The price span for the initial public offering has been fixed at rupees 516 to 542 a share. The IPO will run from April 27 to 29th. The issue comprises a fresh issue of rupees 280 crores and an offer for sale of 2.4 crore equity shares by promoters and investors. To know more about the issue, joining me now is uh, Dr. Ramesh Kajarla, uh, Chairman and Managing Director, uh, Rainbow Children's Hospital. Uh, welcome, Doctor. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, my pleasure. Uh, Dr. Ramesh, uh, please share uh, with us the main highlights of the issue and the key objective uh, behind raising the funds from the private market. The key objectives are uh, for going for IPO is uh, we have an investor who's been there with us for a long term, many years, CDC, which is a uh, British government owned private equity firm, and uh, I have an uh, obligation to give an exit. So that's a primary reason. And also, we kind of are looking at uh, this is the first healthcare chain in the pediatric side to be uh, 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 building out the pan India. So, therefore, it's a better visibility we put, we, what we foresee in future. Doctor, uh, what is your core uh, specialty and the plans uh, for expanding the coverage to uh, other areas? So we are uh, primarily a children's hospital. So mm -hmm. it's a multi-specialty children's hospital. So we are we are uh, uh, India's one of the leading pediatric multi-specialty children's healthcare hospital. Uh, mm -hmm. Perhaps uh, with, uh, uh, being a uh, being a largest with the fifteen hundred beds. Mm -hmm. for pediatrics, pediatric multi-speciality, and uh, pediatric quaternary care, and obstetrics and gynecology. Uh, these are our offerings. Mm -hmm. So what we have been actually uh, uh, doing in the, for the last 20 years is, is uh, it's a model which is actually a, a concept of children's health care, which is uh, very much there across the world, uh, like in the US and UK. The concept of children's health care is very different because it is child centric hospitals is a main feature of the children's health care. And also doctor engagement, mo engagement model is a very specific to, for children's hospitals because children's hospitals are an emergency based hospital. So admissions happen around the clock. So therefore you have to have a full-time doctor engagement model and their commitments to do a night on call coverage as well. So, which is why it's a very, very different healthcare model to address the children's healthcare needs 24 by 7. And having a kind of a birthing within the children's hospital, which is always a beneficial because we never know the which pregnancies end up in the complications. So, in the children's yeah. hospital domain where you have a facilities like neonatal intensive care services at the advanced level to take care of these babies, who are born with that, uh, through the high-risk pregnancies. Right. right. Rainbow currently operates uh, 14 hospitals in uh, three cities, in, uh, three clinics in uh, six cities. Uh, so what is your plan? Your, your main uh, focus till now has been towards the southern part of India. You have hospital in Delhi too, but do you plan to expand in northern and the different regions uh, uh, as far as your expansion plans are concerned? What Rainbow envisages is that you know we have a thousand five hundred beds, of course, dominantly in southern India. What we evaluated over a period of time is to see that you know children's health care is that like Indian Indian cities are very large. The hub and spoke model, which we discovered, is the way forward to the cover the large cities like Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai, and these cities. So each city will have a classically a large hospital, which is hub where you do a specialty care and uh, inter large intensive care services, children's specialty like neurology, nephrology, gastroenterology, even offer transplant services for kids who requires a liver transplant and renal transplants, uh, bone marrow transplants. So the spokes typically drive the emergency services uh, in a growing parts of the city. The hub and spoke model is, is, a, is a classic example of covering the city at large. See, important aspect of children's health care is uh, reaching the hospital in time. A child who has a fit or something you need to reach the hospital ASAP. So having a hub and spoke model, we can optimize the care and also spread the care across the city 
and also kind of a reach out to the peripheries much faster, much quickly uh, through the hub and spoke model. So that's what has been evolved over a period of time. So in Hyderabad, we have about the, the four spokes and one hub. Bangalore, we have about two spokes, one hub. So what we envisage is to kind of a, make it more robust hub and spoke model in these cities, like a, Hyderabad has done extremely well. It's tracking yeah. very well in Bangalore. We would like to take same similar approach in uh, uh, Chennai city as well as in NCR. Okay. Uh, as far as the costs are concerned, uh, sir, they are on the rise. Everything from medicine to medical equipments are getting expensive. So what is average revenue per occupy, occupied bed currently? And how do you think uh, this is going to pan out in the near future? See, well, the, we are a children's hospital. So we offer uh, in, uh, not, only, not only in emergency care, we offer a very large outpatient services. If you look at our uh, uh, overall revenue structure, about 28 to 30% comes through the outpatients revenues. And also we have a, we do large number of delivery cells. So these are also, again, you know, the shorter ALRs gives a better uh, average revenue per occupied bed. And we do look very large intensive care services, almost about one third of our beds across the group about uh, is a dedicated to the intensive care services for the sick newborns as well as children. Again, these are the ones which actually, I mean, because of the complexity of treatment generates higher revenue. So we have, we have a better case mix, shorter ALRs, under better realization. And, and also we do not do a much of a government programs because so the most of our business is the the 50 percent insurance and 50 percent the cash paying out of out of pocket okay. payment okay uh if we talk about the financials that you spoke i mean you recorded a 228 percent year on year growth in profits uh uh, in in, in uh, uh, profits and uh, 126.4 crores for the nine months and in December 2021. Uh, for financials look good, healthy. How? What are the margins that you're operating on currently? And do you expect these margins to shrink? Because now that uh, pent up demand due to COVID is uh, normalizing. I think perhaps uh, pediatrics, uh, children's health care um, uh, has affected uh, negatively in the COVID times because children remain at home and no schools, no travel. So across the world, the children's kind of healthcare has been taken a huge hit, uh, remain at home. So the pent up demand actually perhaps going to come back now because okay. we do not know how the children have been, their health been in the last one and a half months, one and a half year time. So we started seeing a lot of, uh, addressing a lot of uh, issues with children. So it's mm -hmm. perhaps is going to be the other way around for children's healthcare. Mm -hmm. So what are the kind of margins that you're operating on and do, how do you think that margins are going to pan out in the near future now that, that you say that pent up is demand is now going to come forward because, you know, children are now facing the different issues that are related to mental health problems also. Yeah. So uh, what we have seen in this, we, we have taken a hit about uh, 35 to 40 percent in the outpatients, almost equal number of the inpatients during the pandemic year. What we expect to see it is coming back uh, uh, in the normalized year. And also we see uh, uh, the whole spectrum of uh, pediatric patients and also specialty patients and also people coming from the distances also uh, for the surgical problems and those things. That's what is expected. Like uh, we would probably clock back to 2020. Our disease spectrum would, would probably be going to be very similar to us. In terms of that, you know, our growth, I wouldn't kind of uh, be uh, optimistic about uh, uh, future because there's a huge increase in health awareness overall. And also that, you know, the uh, uh, kind of uh, what we see currently, uh, the children coming back to the hospitals, uh, uh, I would expect it to be going, to, going back to normal year like uh, uh, 2020. Thank you, Dr. Amish, for your time. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, we wish you all the best for your forthcoming life, you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Investments in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all related documents carefully before investing.
subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to never miss an update from ICICI Direct.